All right, guys, so we're going to be demonstrating how yeast works. Um, for yeast to work, it needs to have a warm, moist environment. Um, yeast is a living organism that comes from the fungi family, which creates mold and other types of things. So in order for it to work, it has to have sugar. So what happens is the yeast that I'm going to be pouring in here is going to eat the sugar that I've already put in here and the um, water is warm so that way it has a, the warm moist environment. I'm going to put this balloon over it and hopefully what I'm trying to demonstrate is that this yeast is going to be boiling up or bubbling up so what it does is it eats the sugars and then it releases gas so it basically farts and as it farts and releases and explodes upwards it rises so that's why yeast is very very important in dough because it helps rise the dough to make it bigger you want to come close and see you can even look right now in the bubble it's uh needing that time so you're gonna have to wait it takes about a couple of minutes or so for it to start dissolving and hopefully rising up and we'll be able to see what happens but we have to wait So as you can see, the yeast rose, and I'm touching this right now, and there's a bunch of air in here if you want to come closer to take a look. I'm going to try and squish it, and it's really firm right now because all of these yeast right here that's been activated by the sugar is releasing a lot of gas, and all the air is coming up, and that is why yeast is so important in bread making because it helps expand the bread and make it bigger. So as we're going to be making the pretzels, you'll see the dough do the same thing, okay? Hi friends! Today we are going to be learning about pretzels. Pretzels are a really fun snack that come in all different shapes and sizes. For today's lesson, we are going to learn the history of this snack, and we're going to learn a very important ingredient that goes in a pretzel. So let's get started. Did you know that pretzels have been around for over 1400 years? That's a really long time. Legend says that it was first invented by an Italian monk in 610 AD. It became so popular all over Europe in the Middle Ages. It was even put in art paintings. Can you tell in the art paintings over here? Did you find the pretzel? Getting a pretzel used to mean good luck, prosperity, or spiritual fulfillment. Later, it was used in weddings as well, so it also became a symbol of undying love. If the pretzel was so popular in Europe, how did it get all the way over here? Germans migrated from Germany to Pennsylvania, and ever since then, when they brought the pretzel with them, Americans have loved it ever since. To get started, we are going to take our warm milk that we've already um, warmed up through the stove. We're going to put it in a bowl right now. And then we're going to take one and a half teaspoons or tablespoons of yeast, which we've already learned about, so we've learned what it does. So we're going to put this in. Again, yeast needs a warm, moist environment to get activated. And we're just going to let that sit for about five minutes. going to let that calm bubble up, and we'll see what that looks like in about five minutes. And then from there, we'll finish the rest of the pretzel. All right, so it's been about five minutes since we put the yeast and the milk together. Uh, if you want to see what it looks like, it's, I don't know, it's, it looks like alien tadpole babies or something like that. Very strange. So now what we're going to do is I've already pre-measured out our next ingredients, brown sugar, salt, butter, flour. So we're going to put this in here. And we're gonna mix it up. Whew, that was a really good arm workout for me. Hopefully I'll gain some muscle from that. Hopefully for you, you can actually mix it with a real electric mixer instead of having to do what I did. Um, so now we're going to be putting the remaining flour in our mixture and this Hopefully you have 
an electric mixer. Otherwise, you have to be like me and mix it in and get another arm workout. Maybe I'll switch my arm, but it's also awkward. I can't do it. I'm not ambidextrous. Anyways, so now we're gonna mix this in and knead it up and knead and knead and knead and knead until it's completely mixed in and then we're gonna have to let it sit. So that way the yeast will let the dough rise. Now we have to cover up the dough that we've kneaded and it's really important to cover it up because it keeps all of the moisture and warm air inside it to help the yeast continue to eat the sugar like I talked about and expand and get bigger. So we're just going to cover this up and once it's covered up we're going to put it in a warm environment. So some people have put it in a warm oven or if you have a warm area in your kitchen where the sun is. I have a particular warm spot where I like to put all of my doughs that need to rise. And then we will come back in about an hour. <laughs> all right guys, it's time to make the pretzels now. So if you wanna see how much the dough has risen, it's risen a lot since we last did it. Wow. And remember, this is the work of yeast. The yeast is what helped rise the dough up. So it expands it out, gives it that nice chewy texture and whatnot. So put that to the side. So now what we're going to do is known as punching the dough, which you're literally going to punch the dough. So you ready? We're going to punch the dough a few times. Lovely. And now that's down there. Yeah, nice and great. We're going to separate the dough into 12 different sections. Right? That's a big piece of dough. One. I might need to do less than that. Two. Three. Four. This is where you want to use math because you could make four different sections like this and then you can divide it up how many times to get 12 different pieces. You want to make sure that you're learning and using your math skills because it's very, very important. Still dividing up the dough. Trying to get all those. Oh no, it's going in my nails. All those pieces. So let's look and see how many pieces of dough we have here. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. How many pieces did I say we needed to have? 12, right? So if I have eight pieces, how many more pieces do you think I'm going to need to make 12? Four. So I need four more pieces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to take, um, this is a big guy. Let's separate him. <clears throat> so now that gives us nine. And then let me pick another big guy. This one's kind of big. Take some from him. But he's still kind of small, so I gotta mix it around. So math is really important because it can get really confusing really fast. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two more pieces. So I'll take some more from this. And from here. That makes one more piece. And now we need our final piece. So I'm gonna take some of this one and some of this one. Beautiful. So we're gonna practice with this. We'll put these to the side for a moment. So now that we have this piece of dough, what we're gonna try and do is roll it out. Kind of like how you see people do with um, pizza. We're gonna try and roll it out and try not to have it stick. I have this flour here in case, oops, yep. I might be needing some. 
right. I don't know how they do this. Now we have our long string to make. How does it do it? Oh no. I think I just messed it up. It takes a lot of skill. Let's try re rolling this. <laughs> I'm not gonna do all of them, the pretzel, the way that you've seen it. I'm gonna do pretzel bites because I'm lazy and I don't know how to do it. So let's see. We have to cross it. Oh, right. I'm gonna pinch it. So it looks like a hunchback pretzel. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna dip it in a water and baking soda. No! Part. Okay, let me just move this put it on here. This is probably one of the saddest looking pretzels that I've made. Let's make another one. Let's see if I can make it any better. <sighs> My hands are wet so it makes it really hard. I might have to dig into the flour, but yeah, I have a few. This is just sad. Guys, I don't think I can make a pretzel the way that it's supposed to. No! and getting their permission because this is going to be really messy and I have to clean up this mess and you're going to have to clean up whatever mess you make so make sure that you check with your parent or guardian before actually doing it. Oh yes, this is much better now. Let's see. If you hear anything, The importance, I believe I said, of making, that's a really sad looking pretzel. <laughs> anyway, so the importance of dipping it into the baking soda water mixture is so that way it cooks evenly all around so it gets nice and brown. I think I'm going to try to make a uh, pretzel bite with this, so let's see. With a pretzel bite, you're going to need a knife, so make sure you get an adult's permission before using it. All right. I don't know where my knife is. All right, I'll just use this. A different kind of knife. Oh, these aren't bad. And all of these you're going to want to make sure to dip into the baking soda water mixture. I'm going to put it on a different tray. Those just look really sad. I might just end up doing it all pencil bites. Who knows? Dip off any extra um, solution. Otherwise, it probably won't cook right. Nice, nice, nice. It's like giving it a bath. Perfecto. So that's one. So you can do it two different ways. I'll show you guys what it looks like when um, it's done. But before you put it into the oven, you want to make sure that you have some melted butter, like I do here. And you're going to want to take like a brush. Most people have a brush. If not, you'll figure it out and be creative. You're going to want to brush it lightly. I'm not a light person though, so I'll probably brush it really heavy. Yum, yum. And if you want it to be a salted pretzel, some people like salted, I prefer cinnamon sugar, but you want to take some salt and just shake it on there. These ones I'm going to save for different, but I'll show you guys what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. All right. All right. So we've finished making our pretzels. If you look and see, um, 
They're nice and golden, the ones that we dipped in the baking soda, but I want to show you guys these ones over here. Um, why it's important to dip it in the baking soda and water. These are the ones that we had dipped in, so they're nice and golden, but these ones, we didn't. And so they're not exactly going to come out the way that we want them to look. But now we have our pretzels, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with all of them, but it was really fun making them, really fun teaching you guys about the history and the importance of yeast, and I hope that you guys will join me next time for another lesson. See you later.